In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And may the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. My brothers and sisters, once again we gather in the presence of our loving God to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Let us now, in the silence of our hearts, acknowledge our sins and ask for mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you reveal the fullness of the Father's eternal love for us. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you demand that your disciples be known by their love for one another. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you promise us on eternity in your loving presence. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, who have united the many nations in confessing your name, grant that those reborn in the font of baptism may be one in the faith of their hearts and the homage of their deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the crippled man who had been cured clung to Peter and John, all the people hurried in amazement toward them in the portico called Solomon's Portico. When Peter saw this, he addressed the people, You children of Israel, why are you amazed at this? And why do you look so intently at us, as if we had made him walk by our own power or piety? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life who you put to death, but God raised him from the dead of this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, this man, whom you see and know, his name has made, been, has made strong, and the faith that comes through it has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. Now I know, brothers and sisters, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away 
and that the Lord may grant you times of refreshment and send you the Christ already appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the times of universal restoration, of which God spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old. For Moses said, A prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen in all that he may say to you. Everyone who does not listen to that prophet will be cut off from the people. Moreover, all the prophets who spoke from Samuel and those afterwards also announced these days. You are the children of the prophets and of the covenant God made with your ancestors when he said to Abraham, In your offspring all the families of the earth shall be blessed. For you first God raised up his servant and sent him to bless you by turning each of you from your evil ways. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> o Lord, our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. O Lord our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. O Lord our Lord, how glorious is your name over all the earth. What is man that you should be mindful of him, or the son of man that you should care for him? O Lord our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. You have made him little less than the angels and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him rule over the works of your hands, putting all things under his feet. O Lord our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. All sheep and oxen, yes, and the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fishes of the sea, and whatever swims the path of the seas. O Lord, our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The disciples of Jesus recounted what had taken place along the way and how they had come to recognize Jesus in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, 
he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it, and he ate it in front of them. Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. We are told in this morning's gospel that Jesus stood in their midst. When I read those words earlier today, an image came to my mind that goes back to 1943. On July 19th in that year, the city of Rome was bombed early in the morning. That very afternoon, Pope Pius XII, accompanied by Monsignor Montini, left the Vatican for the first time since 1940. They traveled across the city to the Basilica of St. Lawrence outside the wall. The now famous image of Pius XII has him with his arms outstretched over an enormous crowd of people. In a very real way, Pius XII at that moment was the risen Lord in the midst of a terrified and shattered community. Peace be with you. These are the words of the risen Lord that we hear in the gospel today. Jesus standing in the midst of terrified, fear-filled disciples, and his first gift to them is the gift of peace. Peace be with you. And we're told in today's gospel that Jesus opened the hearts of his disciples and help them to recognize his presence in their midst, despite all of the uncertainty and fear that existed in that upper room. The challenge of the risen Lord is that all of us, beginning with those disciples, have been called to be witnesses to the risen Lord in our midst, in times of uncertainty and doubt. We see this in today's first reading once again from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter moves among the people. Peter and all of the disciples who receive that gift of peace become the witnesses that Jesus needed and that the people needed to see and to hear to feel safe and secure. Jesus is in our midst at this present moment. Our lives are called to witness to our awareness of his presence by allowing him to calm our fears and our anxieties 
so that he can open our minds and replace fear with faith. Peter, in today's gospel, first reading, is indeed a bold witness. The effect of his listening to the presence of the risen Lord and allowing his mind and heart, his entire life, to become transformed. In 1943, Pius XII brought comfort and consolation to the people of Rome by his presence. On his white cassock was shattered and spattered with blood as he moved among the people, bringing them comfort, witnessing to the presence of the risen Lord in a time of great uncertainty. Perhaps this morning, in the silence of our own homes, we might close our eyes for just a moment and imagine in the upper room of our home the presence of the risen Lord. Let him speak to your heart today. Let him speak a word that will rouse you to repentance, that will cause you to move out of the house of fear into the house of faith, where Jesus is Lord and says, Peace be with you. Now, with confidence in the risen Lord's presence in our midst, let us offer to him our needs and our petitions, that Christians everywhere may share the peace they have found in the risen one. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That Christ may cast fear and doubt from the hearts of all the baptized. We pray to the Lord that all the nations of the world may wait, work together for peace and harmony among all people, we pray to the Lord. Lord that we may be startled today by the presence of the risen Lord living in our midst, we pray to the Lord. Lord that we may find hope and joy in the presence of Christ among us, we pray to the Lord. We pray in a particular way today for Pope Benedict XVI as he celebrates his 93rd birthday. We pray to the Lord. And let us pray for all our sisters and brothers who are sick and suffering that the healing touch of the Lord may restore them to health. We pray to the Lord. And finally, for all of our beloved dead, that they may share everlasting peace in the presence of the risen Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord o oh God, whose only begotten Son bore the weight of human suffering for the salvation, for our salvation, hear the prayers of your church for our sick brothers and sisters and deliver us from this time of trial. Open our ears and our hearts to hear the voice of your Son. Be not afraid, for I am with you always. Bless all doctors and nurses, researchers and public servants. Give us the wisdom to do what is right and the faith to endure this hour, that we might gather once again to praise your name in the heart of your church, delivered from all distress, and confident in your loving mercy, through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth is given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. The fruit of the vine and the work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray now, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God our Almighty Father. Graciously be pleased, O Lord, to accept the sacrificial gifts we joyfully offer, both for those who have been reborn and in hope of your increased help from heaven. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to bless you even more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he destroyed our death, and by rising, he restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most holy, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire us with words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to justice and peace, and may all your people be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ, and all the dead whose faith is known only to you. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us that when our earthly pilgrimage is done, we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with Saint Bernadette and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Now, formed by divine teaching, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, for we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And may the peace of Christ be with all of you. Lamb of God, Grant us peace, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through your death, gave life to the world. 
Free me by this, your most holy body and blood, from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments and never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be here. O chosen people, proclaim the mighty works of him who calls you out of darkness into his own wonderful light. Alleluia. A prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot all at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. I have to say that I had a little distraction I wonder if today Pope Francis will get in his little Ford Focus and drive by Pope Benedict's house tooting his horn on his birthday celebration. I'm sure the turnout won't be as large as our venerable pastor's birthday celebration. But anyway, let's all say a very special prayer for Pope Benedict today as he celebrates 93 years of life. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended now. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord.